Hi, my name is Ingmar Schumacher. I'm a professor of environmental economics at EPAC Business School in Paris, France. On today's episode of Express Views, I'm very delighted to have both Professor Ian Bateman and Bernie. <laughs> Ian, Ian is the co-director of Land, Environment, Economics and Policy Institute, which is a multidisciplinary institute with the Department of Economics at the University of Exeter Business School in Great Britain. And Bernie, well, that's his uh, little companion on the shoulder that will <laughs> tell him all the answers that he doesn't know himself. He's just whispering in here. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Thank you for being here today. I'm absolutely delighted and honoured to be um, to be asked. Thank you. I'm actually going to give Bernie a break now because um, he's actually making my neck itch. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Bernie, don't take this personal. Uh, he's a good guy. He's good. <laughs> Ian, so as you know, the Express Views works like a snowball fight. I throw a question at you and you throw the first answer that gets into your mind back at me as short as possible. Are you ready? I am. What is your favorite article in environmental economics? Prospect Theory by Danny Kahneman and uh, Tversky. Um, a lot of people would say that's not an environmental economics paper, but they're wrong because it tells you about the complexity of preference formation that underpins a lot of the well-being that we get from uh, the environment. Yeah, I really like the paper. Yeah, good choice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what book should every environmental economist have read? Mine. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, I would actually recommend you to read the Perman text. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a few years now since the last one, but it's great. It's got wonderful coverage. Good. Who is your favorite environmental economist? Um, my very close colleague and friend, uh, uh, Brett Day, who uh, I've been working with for 25 years. Uh, wonderful knowledge of everything that's relevant to environmental economics theory practice. He goes all the way from natural science uh, through economics uh, to policy. And after 25 years, he still hasn't punched me on the nose. So he's a good guy. <laughs> well worth it then. Yeah. <laughs> With whom would you like to write your next article and why? <laughs> Um, gosh, uh, I think I'm actually going to say Brett again, because although we work just down the corridor from each other and on paper, you'd think that we write quite a lot together. We tend to uh, write separately, which is very unfortunately, and neither of us write anywhere near as much as we'd like to write with each other uh, because we're just forever trying to keep everything else on the road. And uh, I actually find him uh, incredibly stimulating to write with. And he doesn't punch you. It's it's a big advantage. Yeah, he's taller than me, so <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> what is the major contribution of the theory of natural capital to environmental economics? Uh, it links the the natural world, natural and physical sciences, right the way through to uh, business and policy decision making and change in the real world and it's environmental economics that is the glue between those two end points that's how important our discipline actually is um, uh, you know i have to say that there's some great environmental science out there but science on its own isn't going to change the decisions that policymakers uh, have to make because it's it's in a t totally different language and it doesn't answer key questions like, well, who is going to benefit, who's going to lose and how much? And that's what environmental economics does. That's a great answer. Thank you. Which living environmental economist do you admire most and why? I think I'm actually going to say uh, Richard Carson. Um, who really took the area of uh, environmental valuation from uh, quite an obscure uh, little uh, discipline and actually showed that it was feasible to do this, uh, that you could do it um, 
uh, robustly in in some cases, not in all, but in, in some, and introduce an awful lot of both theoretical and empirical rigor into uh, the practice of uh, environmental economics. An all around town. Yeah, he's pretty, and he's a nice guy. Very nice guy. A lot of people um, uh, should should really appreciate what he's done for the uh, for the field. Are we consuming too much natural capital? Unfortunately, yes, uh, and it's very, very clear. You know, you only have to look at what is happening uh, in terms of uh, climate change to see that, because uh, the atmosphere is a vital uh, uh, part of our natural capital system, and we're degrading it all the time. Um, just look at the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere going up every single year, even in this COVID year, uh, very regrettable. Um, the other the other one that I'd obviously mention is biodiversity, and that's the one that I am particularly worried about because I can't see an obvious solution to it. And biodiversity links uh, the ecosystems of the world with maintaining our well-being, and we're degrading it at an incredibly fast rate. Not good news. No, I don't. So, um, do you believe in God? Yes, I do. Yeah. Very few do nowadays. Hmm? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and that's absolutely fine. I am not. How important is theory for econometrics? There is no econometrics without theory. It's, it's just statistics otherwise. Um, econometrics is statistics with a purpose. And that purpose is to actually be able to have a framework which means that we can put humans inside that otherwise statistical analysis, bring in their preferences and drives and objectives, and therefore use those theoretically constructed uh, econometric models to uh, improve decision making by predicting uh, the reactions to uh, different policies, different business decisions, that sort of thing. I wish more econometricians would, uh, would have that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you could spend one hour with a person of your choice, who would it be and why? It would be Georgina Mace, who I uh, worked with for the last 10 years of her life. She passed away last year. Uh, wonderful person. She didn't tell me how ill she really was. I would really like to see her for that uh, case, uh, for that reason. But also, she was uh, one of the most diamond clear thinkers I've ever met in my life. And I was very fortunate to get the time that I did with her. But uh, another hour would be absolutely fabulous. Mm. <laughs> Ian, please complete the following sentences. Natural capital for me is the basis of all value and well-being on the planet. If I could turn back time at maximum 40 years, I would... Ensure that we put policies in place that would make sure that Brexit never happened. And part of that, which I think the whole of Europe would appreciate, is actually not going into the common agricultural policy. Tough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The study of environmental economics is by far the most interesting part of economics. Flat out, no competition. <laughs> Life on planet Earth in the year 2100 will be, I hope, very like the 1970s. Uh, fabulous music, um, uh, a much lower uh, air concentration of carbon in the atmosphere, uh, uh, the, the wealth of biodiversity that we had uh, back then uh, still in existence. And uh, I hope one change is that the distribution of well-being across uh, the planet will be significantly improved. I agree with everything apart from the music. <laughs> <laughs> we had Bee Gees and Led Zeppelin all at the same time. <laughs> if Kenneth Arrow was still alive, then he would be very old, but he would still be the most eminent environmental economist in the world. Ian, 
I have to say those were some fantastic answers. Very interesting, very intriguing. Thank you very much. I invite uh, those of you who would like to get more details about Ian, his research and his ideas to take a look at my Meet Top Environmental Economist interview with Ian, which you can find on my website, the SFP Lab website and on YouTube. Ian, thank you so much for having been here today. It was a true pleasure. Oh, pleasure was all mine, both me and Bernie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye, Bernie. Bye. <laughs>